Welcome to Pesto Comics Audio Edition. This is the entry for November 13th, 2024. I'm no artist, but I try. My adventure with Inktober 2024. Welcome back. Last week I mentioned that I wrote and recorded the newsletter on Monday, well before we knew how the US elections would go. I don't think anyone guessed they'd play out the way they did, regardless of which side you may have been on. There's a lot of doom and gloom on the socials the day after, which also happened to be the launch day for Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1. We'll get into how that went, but it was definitely a bright spot through the clouds. I feel like it's been more than just a week since my last update. There have been more than enough debriefs out there. My podcast queue was exhaustingly repetitive, even my Canadian-centric pods. A quick Canadian politics aside, the situation stateside can theoretically force a change to our leadership as the Fed, led by Justin Trudeau, We'll have to choose between upsetting Quebec by opening up our dairy market to the U.S. or facing retaliatory tariffs. Small potatoes in the grand scheme of things, but an interesting ripple hitting us north of the border. If there's anything to take from this, it's that politics are the worst. Let's get back to talking about more trivial matters like crowdfunding books and comic books and drawing funny doodles. Project updates. Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1 is already funded. This is going to be a fun one to review, as it's been keeping pace with Crazy Latte Thing Called Love So Far, which is my best performing launch to date. I think there's something to be said for timing the market. A lot of readers I know, myself included, really start digging into some fiction as the weather gets cold and you don't want to be staring at a screen all winter. I believe that might help this campaign. It also helps that there's 40 authors involved in this book, and they've been doing their best to spread the word, if not supporting the campaign itself. There's a big difference when you have the force of a large team behind a book. If you'd like to check it out, you can find it on Kickstarter until November 29th. Archetypes 2 is another project I'm involved in, and although I'm a backer, I'm not involved in crowdfunding it directly myself. I do have an ongoing series of articles called Writing Tools Within, and I'd love to keep that going. This book would have to get funded for that to happen. I've seen some of the art for the comics in this magazine, and it's really top-level stuff. Benjamin Morse, who has amazing projects like We Are Scarlet Twilight and August Purgatory Underground, is a regular contributor to the book. If you've seen his work there, you know the quality I'm referring to. You've got until November 21st to check this one out. One for the new year. Just a reminder that our pre-launch page is up for Naked Kaiju Woman. It's going to be more of a run-up through December instead of doing overlapping campaigns like I have with Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1 and From Parts Unknown Number 1. I'm hoping to make a big splash with this one. I'm also going to work with Kickstarter to get the proper pre-launch page up soon. I think it caters to a certain market on Kickstarter that none of my other books have before. That said, if you've read my work, you know I love female leads. If they're done well, you know they handle things differently than most male leads would, so it's inherently more interesting off the hop. Even though the title and cover may seem a bit gratuitous, you can be assured that's not the way I'm going with this. Think of it more as European in nature. Yes, nudity is part of the story, but it's not meant to titillate alone. The naked kaiju woman pictured in the teaser image, Claire, is one of my favorite characters I've written in a while. I can't wait for you to meet her. Raphael Cristiani has done an incredible job bringing her to life, and I can't wait to see the colors by From Parts Unknown collaborator, J.P. Jordan. I'll have a lot more to share leading up to it, and I don't want you to miss out. Naked Kaiju Woman launches on January 8th. Event updates. Thought Bubble is this weekend. Tomorrow night, after I've wrapped up my day job, I'm hopping on an overnight flight to Manchester en route to Harrogate. Thought Bubble is finally here. I've already been given an assignment to go to Primark to get some gifts to bring back, but I'm expecting to fill my luggage with some great indie projects from across the pond. More importantly, I've figured out what to bring with me. I'll have samples of all my comics and a handful to do some trades with folks in person. I also have a handful of stickers and bookmarks to share. For those of you who will be there, I'll have an extra special treat for newsletter subscribers. I'll be wearing my Team Canada hockey jersey, so I'll be very easy to find at table C14A in Redshirt Hall, which is right when you enter from Entrance 4. Ending 2024 on a high note, I'll be doing a spotlight day at Wayside Comics and Cocktails in Newmarket, Ontario, I'm trying to twist Roberto's arm into joining me, but we'll see if he makes it. If you're in the Toronto area, I always recommend visiting the shop and plan to stay a while. If you happen to be around on December 7th, come on by. Let's chat and have a beer together.
I'll bring all my current work, and if you insist after reading this newsletter, I'll doodle something awful for you. Everyone I've talked to who's done a weekend at Wayside always tells me what an incredible experience it was, so I'm really looking forward to having my shot at it. It's something I've been pestering Omar for for months now, so I'm very grateful. And now, let's talk about art and how I'm bad at it. Artistic discipline. Just having a little bit can make a huge difference in your life. That's why things like Inktober, NaNoWriMo, and all these silly challenges that are based on whatever month you're in can really make a big difference if you stick to them. On a recent episode of the Instant Ink comic book podcast with myself and Roberto Villacava, we got into a conversation about what it takes to become a true artist. In short, it's the willingness to fail. It's to know that you're not where you need to be and taking the steps to get there. It's something that I'm not doing regularly when it comes to art. I've become a lot better than I was as a child, sure, but I'm still very, very far from where I'd want to be. If you supported any of my campaigns or even just follow the newsletter closely, you know that I hire out all my art. And that's with good reason, because I'm not much of an artist. And I insist on putting out store-quality product that wouldn't look out of place in between your big two books. Though, as the title mentioned, I do try. I have taken a disciplined approach to my writing. I'm very far from where I want to be, but I write every day, and have been for decades now. I've always done blogs, short stories, articles, comics, and whatever I feel like would help me hone my skills. Even if I felt like I wasn't doing it as well as I had hoped, which is nearly every single time, I still powered through and got the pieces done. When it comes to art, if I didn't like the look of what I was drawing, I would quit and move on to something else. That's the quick path to stagnation. Inktober enforcing it. This is where a challenge like Inktober comes into play. Drawing isn't my main goal, but it's something I'd really love to get better at. I have a hard time making time for it. When I start having a hard time with it, I think of all the things I could be writing instead. I have three comic strips that I've written out over a year's worth of daily strips for that I would love to get out there, but I can't afford to hire an artist for that amount of work. At least not yet. If I could draw it myself, I could share it all a lot sooner. I even announced one in a newsletter a while ago. Once I really started to get into it though, I panicked and I took it off the schedule. I'm still working at it, but just not at the pace I need for it to actually be useful. That's my reason for jumping into Inktober this year. I had no excuse not to go for it. If anything, it stretches my comic strip muscles as it gives me a chance to write some one panel gags. And yet, I failed the challenge. I didn't end up doing the last 10 prompts as Big Smoke Pulp Volume 1, another couple new writing projects, and editing Instant Ink comic book podcast took a lot of my free time. I still think it was good to try it this year, but I need to make time for drawing if I have any hopes of improving. Elevated stick figures. I believe to have a style in art, you actually have to be good at what you're doing. That's not me. I can draw things and make them look like something, kind of. And that's worth something. Not much, though. When it comes to my writing, I sometimes go back and read my old work, and even though I don't feel the difference when I'm in the act of writing, there's a very clear progression. You can almost tell what book I was reading when I wrote each piece based on my poor mimicry of their style of my stories. Nowadays, there's a few influences coming together to make it my own. I'm still far from where I want to be, though. The problem with my drawings is I'm not seeing any progression. That said, I haven't taken the same approach with art as I have with writing. I usually just doodle and draw what I'm comfortable with. I do it for fun. I rarely actually push myself into drawing things that I'm not used to. When I do, I have some pretty disastrous results and get frustrated. But that's okay. That's part of the process. If I were to stick with it. I often think of the slogan of a brewery in my neighborhood called Steam Whistle. They say... Do one thing really, really well. I tell myself I just want to be able to do cartooning really well. That's the story I tell myself. But if I'm being serious, I'd love to be able to do pinups too. Being able to do my own book covers and comic covers would be amazing as well. I might even be able to do commissions at my con table if I get good enough. Basically, I want to win the lottery of drawing. Put little effort in and get all the results. Jealousy is a good motivator. If you've read or listened to any of my con journals, you know I tend to be jealous of folks selling stickers or doing art commissions around me. As a writer, I don't have much to do but be a full-on salesman, pestering people to come by and take a look at my comics. 
I think there's some benefits to that. Being able to look people in the eye and have a conversation with them, rather than being buried in a sketchbook. But, at the same time, nothing draws people into your table like drawing live. I'll be tabling with Roberto at future conventions, and hopefully he'll be bringing people to our table in that way while I'm playing the role of Carnival Barker. But, I'd still love to be able to do that myself. The common question I get at every show is, did you draw these? When I tell them that I'm the lowly writer, there's almost always a little bit of hesitation before they say, oh, that's cool, in a polite kind of way. Just once, I'd love to be able to say that I do draw and have something to point to. It would also make social media a lot easier, especially when we're talking about the ones like Instagram or TikTok. Even with the goofy drawings I shared for Inktober, I was able to get a few likes and attention that I don't get normally. That's why I think I'm still going to commit a tiny fraction of time to drawing, just so I have something to share every so often and can keep improving. But there are only so many hours. The biggest challenge I have is where do I spend my free time? I still have a full-time job that I need to focus on. Plus, I'm doing overlapping Kickstarters for the first time where I just fulfilled from parts unknown while launching Big Smoke Pulp. I'm still not feeling overwhelmed, but I'm definitely feeling the pinch of not being able to do everything I want to do when I want to do it. Something has to give. Writing is my bread and butter. This is how my projects are going to come to life, and if I have to keep hiring artists to do it, so be it. The silver lining is that I have a few writing-centric projects coming up, for which I'll share more about in the new year, and I want to put as much energy and focus into that as I can. But I don't think there's any harm in taking five minutes a day to do a quick doodle here or there. I'll give the majority of my time to writing, but I'll definitely be sure to make time to pick up the pencil. Who knows? Maybe I'll get good enough to start sharing some comic strips in this newsletter. Or, at least, be better prepared for next Inktober. Until then. Coming up next on the Substack. November 20th, Con Journal. Just look for the Lost Canadian. The last con of 2024. Thought Bubble. And on November 27th, Fun with Fulfillment, From Parts Unknown Number 1, the second part of the From Parts Unknown Number 1 postmortem. And December 4th, Getting the Reps In, Reviewing NaNoWriMo, or whatever we're calling it now. And once again, thank you, thank you very much for listening. I really do appreciate it. So art is not my bag, as I've made it very clear in the newsletter. It's something I've always dreamed of doing. I always wanted to get good at it, but not enough to actually do anything to get better at it, which is kind of this, the point. Um, I always felt, you know, you have a limited bandwidth in terms of what you can really master. And I thought if I put all my energy into writing, maybe I'll get better at that. Even then, I haven't put all of my energy into writing. I'm usually doing silly things like putting up websites and uh, the like. I'm doing stuff for my career, which is probably important as it helps everything else uh, happen. You know, the comics don't happen if I can't fund them to start because uh, you know i'm usually working ahead before the kickstarter is ever launched so yeah need the full-time job so i've really spent most of all of my 20s and most of my 30s doing that so all the spare time was used to write and yeah if i have to identify myself as something i'm a writer right that's my goal and i have a lot more writing wise that i'll have coming out as much as i love comics and that's my primary driver. I want to have as many comics out there as possible. I can only fund so many artists at the same time without going bankrupt. So it's really important that I keep that going. But I also want to get more work out there. So I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of, again, not just ideas, projects in the works, things that are on the go that are in various stages. But 2025 is going to be a huge year. I'm really trying not to get too ahead of myself because, as I mentioned with that comic strip that I didn't fully get out there. I don't want to be doing that too often. I don't want to promise projects that never see the light of day. I want to tell everyone about the projects when there's something to tell. So anyways, without getting too far ahead of myself, my first post of the new year, I always share what the plan is as far as I know on the first week of January. And yeah, it's going to be a big one. Um, I have a lot of projects in the works. I'll share what I can of each, but 2025 is going to be a really big year. 2024 was a great year. It was, you know, got, I went to a whole bunch of shows, uh, met a, a whole ton of people I never got to meet before. I got to meet a whole bunch of creators that I spoke to online or knew from afar, and I got to meet them in person and build a relationship with folks. And 
that's been amazing. And I can't wait to do more of that in 2025, but more so, I feel this is going to be the year that I really kind of establish where I'm at and, and who I am. And, you know, it won't just be one or two projects. Like there's going to be Naked Kaiju Woman. You know, that's one series with five issues coming out. Uh, From Parts Unknown will be done before the end of the midpoint of next year. Daniel is currently drawing issue four and then issue five shortly after. So like that book will be ready. It's just a matter of crowdfunding and the delay in doing that and getting that out. And just the way Kickstarter works. I would do it as a graphic novel and I probably wouldn't be able to make any of that money back. So we're doing it issue per issue. But it's going to be really important to pace everything. And it's going to be a lot. There's going to be so much. And I really can't wait to share it all. I think you guys are really going to enjoy all the stuff that's coming out. And there's going to be some different kinds of things. Things that aren't just comics. Again, not just writing either. Just so so many different avenues I'm trying to go down to really... Not just bring up Pesto Comics, which is my own, you know, little business, but also collaborating with others. Some really cool projects that aren't just directly under me, but I have a big part in. So yeah, it's just so much to share. I'm really, really looking forward to next year. It it should be huge if everything goes as planned. So yeah, stick around. Let people know about all the current projects. Again, Big Smoke Pulp funded very quickly. Three hours funded. Amazing. Very, very happy with that. It's on pace with... uh, crazy latte thing called love which is my best performing one and i'm really hoping it'll surpass it if the pace continues it might just go even further so here's hoping it's a really cool project so even though it's funded uh i usually don't put my goal as a break-even point it's more what's the minimum i need to not lose my shirt in putting this work out but if this does break even then this becomes a project that i will do regularly right? Uh, At least annually, if not more so. So because people seem to like it. So I really hope that this does really well, because that'd be another cool project that we can have for next year. Stick around. You know, again, I have a few weeks left until the end of the year. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, But yeah, and if you're in the UK, uh, please, and you're going to Thought Bubble, please come by. Uh, I know a handful of people there, but I'd love to know if I know even more. I'd love to see you. I'm also going to go to that MidCon party. So if you're going to be there, Come find me. I'm, I'll be wearing the Canada jersey. Very easy to find. Um, yeah, I'd love to meet some folks out there. Should be a fun show. It's huge from my understanding, so I'm really looking forward to it. I've rambled a long time. Thank you so much for being here. We'll talk very soon. Have a good one. Thanks. Thanks.